Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at fossil fuels, power stations and the national grid. So fossil fuels and non-renewable fuels, they are made from organic matter that's been buried under the ground for a long period of time and is formed either coal, oil or gas. Nuclear power stations generate electricity using heat from nuclear fuel rods to heat the water. And coal powered power stations use heat from burning coal to boil water, which can then be used to turn turbines. Fossil fuels are non renewable because they will run out one day. Burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gases and rely on them for a long period of time will be unsustainable. So the main advantages of fossil fuels is at the moment fossil fuels are relatively cheap to obtain and all the infrastructure so all the power stations are already there and designed to run on fossil fuels. The major disadvantages are that they're not renewable so there's limited supply so at some point they will run out they release gases such as sulfur dioxide into the air which causes acid rain and carbon dioxide into the air which adds to the greenhouse effect and leads to global warming so the pie chart shows the proportions of electricity generated from different sources in 2010. Calculate the percentage using non-renewables, so that would be nuclear plus coal plus gas, which would give you 93%. What sort of energy makes up 7%? So renewable. What is the percentage produced by fossil fuels? So that would be gas plus coal, which would give you 77%. And a student wrote that coal traps energy from the sun explain what the student means the plants are using the energy during photosynthesis for growth and then the plants are changed or turned into coal so nuclear power stations so the main nuclear fuels are uranium and plutonium in a nuclear power station a reaction is happening that converts that stored energy in the nuclear bonds between atoms to be converted into heat energy. This heat energy can then be used to turn water into steam, which can then go and drive a turbine, which would then go and turn a generator. So the advantages are that it produces no carbon dioxide and no sulfur dioxide and one kilogram of nuclear fuel produces a million times more energy than one kilogram of coal. The big disadvantages are that it's non-renewable at some point we will run out. Most reactors are extremely safe however if there is an accident large amounts of radioactive material could be released into the environment and nuclear waste remains radioactive for thousands of years and it's difficult to store. So what generates the heat inside of a nuclear power station? It would be the radioactive decay of uranium fuel rods. Power stations fueled by fossil fuels, so things like coal, generate electricity by burning the coal and then boiling water into turn steam. So the first thing that happens is that the coal is ground down into a fine powder. That increases its surface area. The coal dust is then blown into a furnace where it burns. The heat from that is used to boil water in a boiler to produce high pressure steam. That steam turns a turbine. The turbine turns a generator which generates electricity. This electricity is then stepped up by a transformer 
and transmitted around the national grid. If we think about how energy might be lost in a power station, there's always going to be some heat energy that is not used to go and heat up the water. So heat might be radiated from the power station. So for instance, it might be going up the chimney where it will be lost to the environment. Electricity is transferred from power stations to consumers through wires and cables through the national grid. It's done at a high voltage because this reduces energy losses. So the diagram below shows different parts of the national grid. So what generates the electricity, what changes the voltage, what is the electricity transmitted through. So obviously the power station is generating the electricity, the transformers change the voltage and the electricity is transmitted through transmission or electrical cables. Outline the advantages and disadvantages of overhead cables and underground cables. So the advantages of overhead are that it's relatively quick and easy to repair them and maintain them. They don't need cooling because they're surrounded by air and the air also acts as a good insulator. The disadvantages is that some people say that it spoils the landscape people will be of more risk of coming into contact with them so it could die of electric shock and low flying aircraft or helicopters could go and crash into them the advantages of underground is that they can't be seen there's no hazard to aircraft or helicopters they are unlikely to be damaged by the weather the disadvantages is that repairs to them take a long time they're more expensive it's hard to maintain them if you need to go replace anything you need to dig up the area around them uh, the cables where there's a break can often be hard to locate and you might need to go and install cooling systems because the earth around them will act as an insulator which will cause them to heat up thanks for watching